different companies have different leveling scales. Some start at L3 and go all the way to L8. Some start at 59 and go all the way to 70. Even if the numbers differ, the responsibilities at each level, company to company, are the same. And what's needed for promotion to level up is similar too. Our wonderful sponsor for today's video also allows you to level up. Your websites, that is. Thank you, Squarespace. We'll get to them in a bit. Because many companies follow Google's leveling standard, that's also what we'll be using as reference. And just a note, we're gonna be discussing the career leveling paths for individual contributors. I'll talk about the management route in a different video. Let's get into it. L2. If you're an intern, this is your level. At many companies, apprenticeships are also this level, meaning you're coming from a non-traditional background or transitioning from a non-tech role to a software engineering role. And in six months to a year, you'll be a full-time L3. At this level, your expectations are basically the exact same as in L3s, but for a shorter period of time. Usually internships last anywhere from three months to six months. So the company is evaluating you as a new L3 working on a specific feature for a specific time frame. But more than technical skills, your soft skills are really important here. Are you someone the company wants to hire back full time? Are you curious and eager to learn? Do you take feedback well? Are you a good teammate? An internship is basically a prolonged practical interview. I wouldn't say the company is looking for signals that you're competent. Rather, they're looking for red flags. Are you rude? Do you randomly just skip work? Do you argue and give in feedback? Just be a sponge and absorb everything. Say yes more than you say no. Just be a good human being and you'll be good to go. L3. If you've just graduated college or boot camp, you've worked in industry for less than a year, or you have no technical industry experience, this is your level. Software engineer one. You're a junior engineer and you have feature level impact. This means you're responsible for a tiny chunk of a project. Let's say your team is building an authentication server. There are a lot of moving parts, but you've been specifically tasked with writing up the encryption logic. And remember, an intern might have worked on the encryption logic if it was self-contained and well-scoped for three months work. See how an L2 is basically an L3 for a shorter period of time? Now, your mentor or senior engineer has specced out the work architecturally and mentioned some resources you might want to check out. He or she might have even broken down the various things you'll have to do to write the encryption module. These tasks might live in Asana or Jira or some other project management tool. The tech lead has estimated how much time this work should take and hands off all the information to you. You're now responsible for coding up the entire feature. You're expected to write clean, well-tested code. You'll make PRs and accept feedback and suggestions. You might not know how to write the best industry standard code, but you're eager to learn and take feedback well. Over the course of one to two years, you'll get better and better at coding. The team will trust you as someone who can go out and build entire features. They'll hold your hand less and less. Now, depending on the size of the company, maybe you'll have to think of more than just your feature. You'll have to think about the architecture and monitoring and how what you're writing fits in with what your team or the rest of the company is building. Usually, the bigger the company, the more the handholding and resources available to you. The smaller the company, like a startup, and the more you'll have to be scrappy and just figure it out. But that's the fun of it. That's why you join, to learn and grow. In this role, you're mainly writing code. Companies expect you to move to the next level in about two years. L4. If you're anywhere from 1.5 to five years in industry, you might be an L4. Software engineer too. You're not a senior engineer yet, but you're also not as junior anymore. The company trusts that you can code well, so they've given you more responsibility. Now, you're one step above the feature. You have project level impact. Rather than responsible for coding up a feature, you're leading the entire project. You're in charge of making sure the authentication server is complete, well-tested and delivered on time. This might mean you're overseeing the L3 working on the encryption logic and the L2 working on the database layer and the other L3 working on the API contract. The success of the entire project is on you. Are there monitors? Are there dashboards? How will you determine the launch success? Did you do a bug bash? Did you update the documentation? Did you talk to the support team? You're like the tech lead for a specific project. In this role, you're still writing code, but you're also reading and reviewing other people's code, and you're talking to stakeholders. Most companies expect you to grow to the next level in about three years. Much like you work towards leveling up in your software engineering career, it's time you level up your websites. Squarespace offers robust analytics so you can gain powerful insights into who's visiting your site and how they're interacting with your content. You're exposed to metrics like page views, traffic sources, and audience geography. You also have powerful blogging tools at your fingertips that allow you to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. And as you build out your personal brand and business, you can easily gather contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. And you have access to member areas where you can unlock new revenue streams for your business by selling access to gated content like classes, online courses, or newsletters. 
Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Naman Kapoor to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. L5. After anywhere from three to seven years in industry, you might be an L5, senior software engineer. This is usually a terminal role, which means you can stay at this level for the rest of your career if you want. There's no expectation to keep leveling up unless you want to. You now have team level impact. For example, let's say the authentication server is owned by the payments infrastructure team, but the team has other projects too, like the ledger and the transaction fee engine and many more. As a senior software engineer, you're like the tech lead of the entire team, not just a project. You think about how the architecture of specific projects work together. Do they make sense? Do they fit in with what the rest of the organization or the company are building? You're also a technical expert, which means you're sent to work on the team's highest priority items. You make sure the team as a whole achieves technical excellence and growth. And you're a subject matter expert. You're the person people hit up to understand a specific part of the code base. You have depth of knowledge in addition to understanding the breadth of the technical systems. You also have some insight into the business side. You interface with product managers to determine what the team works on and how the team can best support company level OKRs in a technical capacity. In this role, you're writing much less code now. You're reading and reviewing a lot of code and spending time in meetings. You're also coaching junior engineers and spearheading initiatives like tech deck cleanup, broad refactors, and cultural programs. The promotion path is much more hazy now. You've already proved technical competence, so to get promoted, you have to somehow increase the company's bottom line. This comes from a combination of luck, timing, and performance. L6. After anywhere from seven to 10 years in industry, you might be an L6, staff software engineer. You now have org level impact. And what I mean by this is the authentication server might be owned by the payments infrastructure team. But payments infrastructure is just one of many teams in the financial products org. You might also have payments and subscriptions. You're like the technical expert of the entire org. As a staff software engineer, you're thinking more than just features, projects, and teams. You're thinking about the future of the entire org. What tools should the org invest in? What tech deck cleanup would make the org more efficient? How are the teams intertwined technically? Is there friction? What are the improvements? You're thinking about new product lines and huge technical initiatives. Things like rewriting your testing framework or your GraphQL structure, or rethinking your entire API schema. And just like an L5 is working on a team's topmost priorities, an L6 is dispatched to the org's highest pressing items. And you're working on non-technical initiatives, like rethinking the interview experience, or spinning up a new blog, or speaking at conferences. You're a technical leader. You're responsible for how the org is represented to the rest of the company. In this role, you're writing almost no code. You're reading and reviewing code, and you're in a lot of meetings. But more than that, you're spending a lot of time thinking and churning out tech specs. You're also coaching engineers and thinking about how to get those around you promoted. Again, the promotion path is even hazier now. A lot of emphasis is placed on mentorship along with business dollar impact. L7. After anywhere from eight to 13 years in industry, you might be an L7, senior staff software engineer. Whew, lots of S's. You now have company level impact. You're one of the highest technical people at a company. For all it's worth, you're basically an executive. The C-suite and the VP of engineering lean on you for your technical expertise. You're thinking of technical direction at a company level. You spend your time across orgs, maybe three months in financial products, then three months in shopper, and then three months in the merchant org. You help the company come up with OKRs and think of entire systems, not just a table or a database, but the entire AWS Postgres infrastructure. You think about other databases and caches and latency. You think about the entire company architecture. You can usually count the number of L7s at a company on one, maybe two hands. In this role, you no longer write code. You're in a lot of meetings, and much like in L6, you're reading and reviewing a lot of code. Sometimes you might be leading your own team to complete a project that you're interested in. You might be in charge of the special projects initiatives at a company. At this level, you have a lot of freedom to do as you please. As long as you're helping the company in some way, no one will stop you. Getting promoted is extremely difficult. You basically have to build out an entire product line that becomes successful. Or you have to know the right people or you just have to stay at a company for an absurdly long time. L8 and beyond. There's not much to say here. Titles don't even matter anymore. You're probably a principal software engineer or a technical fellow. You can usually count the L8s at a company on one hand. These are like the earliest engineers at Google. Think Jeff Dean or Sanjay Gamawad. You're a legend. You don't just have company level impact, you have industry level impact. You create new technical areas. You innovate and people listen. News organizations write articles about you. When Apple comes out with some crazy machine learning model, your name is front and center. And when you leave because of unfriendly remote policies, 
everyone notices. You're probably a keynote speaker at a prestigious conference. You're getting paid more than you had ever imagined and you're having so much fun. You say you wanna do something and the company goes out of its way to make it happen. You're irreplaceable. You've realized promotions are virtually meaningless. You've accomplished more than 99.99% .99 of software engineers ever will. And if you do get promoted, the company will invent new levels just for you. You work because you want to, not because you have to. You're having so much fun. I'm just an L4 and I have a long way to go, but hopefully this guide demystifies the leveling process used at tech companies and gives you a solid understanding of what to expect every step of the way. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Focus on learning and growing and the promotions will naturally follow. I wish you nothing but the best. That's all I have. Till next time, cheers.